All right, next question. And in this one here, we're going to, as always, read that question sentence. Here it says, how many liters of base actually go into the smoothies? Okay. Everybody think about the way that this is worded. Think about the way it's worded. How many liters of base actually go into the smoothies? Everybody, based on the way that this is written, based on the way it's written, is it fair to say that there was an amount that was supposed to go into the smoothies that was supposed to go in, but we're trying to find what actually went in? So there might be a difference between what we expected and what we actually did. Is that fair to say, you know, based off of the way that the question is written when it says the word actually in there? Right on. So let's think about that here. Let's read. It says, for smoothies, a cafe uses two-sevenths of a liter of base per serving. Okay, let me write that down. Two-sevenths of a liter of base per serving. That's ugly, but that's okay. And then it says, today they make four servings, but they spill one-fourteenth of a liter before blending. How many liters of base actually went into the smoothies? So everybody, let's think about it like this. If we, and like, let's not even use a fraction, like ignore the fraction, don't even worry about it. If there's this much base per serving, and then it says that we had four servings, four servings, how, how do we calculate the amount of base, everybody? How do we calculate the amount of base? If we have this much per serving and we have four servings, how do we get the grand total? What operation is going to get us there? And the best way to think about this is don't think about the fractions, everybody. If I said that I had, let's go ahead and say three liters per serving. And I did four servings. Again, this is just me, you know, detouring here. But let's say we had three liters per serving and we had four servings, that's multiplication. That's multiplication. Three in the first, three in the second, three in the third, and three in the fourth. Three repeated four times, that is three times four. So this is no different other than the number than this up here. It's the same. It's multiplication still. It's not gonna be as much fun since it's not a whole number. Okay, boo-hoo, why ha? Huh? but we're gonna get through this and figure it out. So here we are. We have two sevenths of a liter per serving and four servings, so we will multiply that. And then what we have to take into account is this one last little detail. They spilled 1 14th of a liter. Everybody, with that 1 14th, are we gonna simply take away, subtract 1 14th at the end, or do we need to divide or multiply that? Yeah, just subtraction. Just subtraction because we're talking about liters already. And if we spill 1 14th of a liter, we're just taking that away. Because we're talking about liters already. So here we are. We're going to do 2 over 7 multiplied by the 4. And the 4, I'm going to write it as a fraction over 1. I'm doing that simply because, well, guess what? Multiplying fractions. You can write it as a one, make your life easy. And when you do that, you have two times four, which is eight, seven times one, which is seven. So now we have eight over seven liters. What we said we would do at the end with the spillage is we will take away one fourteenth. So if I write that down over here, we have eight over seven liters and we spilled one over 14 liters. And this is how we're gonna get the final answer. We only spilled it once. Notice how they didn't say they spilled one fourteenth per serving. If they spilled every single serving, I'm gonna fire that person. I don't even need, I don't think I need to say that to everybody here, but I would absolutely fire that person. That this would be a ridiculous problem. With that, let's go ahead and move this out of the way. Bring this to the top. And here we go. And that's correct. Coach Anderson does not play. So here we are. We're gonna go ahead and get the same denominator here. We have seven and 14, they're not the same. To get them the same, I realized that seven can absolutely go into 14. 
And because of that, I'll multiply by two on the bottom and on the top. And that's gonna give me 16 over 14 minus one over 14. This might be a little easier now, everybody. What is 16 minus one? Yeah, it's gonna be 15, absolutely. And there's my final answer. My final answer is going to be 15 over 14. And notice how this is not in the answer choices, but we can easily rectify that by going ahead and converting this improper fraction into a mixed number. One way to think about it is, everybody, how many times does 14 go into 15? That's gonna be one whole time, perfect. And when we take away the 14 from the 15, how much do we have remaining? One, exactly. 15 minus 14 is a remaining one out of 14. And there we are. These are both correct, but the true correct answer will be one and one fourteenth. And there it is, my party people. And we are good. All right, let's get started with this problem here. And as always, for any word problem, everybody, the first thing we always want to do is we want to read that question statement. So the who, what, when, where, how many, which of the following, we really want to handle that part first. So right here, what is the constant K? All right, sounds good. So the one thing I notice here is what we're looking for, what I want to find, again, it's just the value of K. This doesn't, you know, let me start getting nervous about the extra information. No, this is a very goal-oriented action. All I want to do here is understand my goal, figure out what K is. Sounds good. So I see that there is a lot of context. I see it says a quantity Y varies directly with X according to Y equals KX. Okay, let's go ahead and highlight that. That seems a little weird, and that's something that we really need to pay attention to. So we have Y equals KX. Okay. My party people, quick question. Even though they don't explicitly say it, what operation are we currently looking at between the K and the X? What operation are we currently looking at? That isn't quite shown. That's going to be multiplication. Now, that is not a random question. That's going to be an important question that's going to come right up here in a few moments. So here's what they're telling us. We're trying to find K in this equation, and we know that Y is 84 and X is 12. Everybody, what is that P word? What is that word or that phrase that starts with a P that we're going to do with the values Y84 and X is 12? What are we going to do with those two numbers? Yeah, we're just going to plug them in. We are going to plug those values in and then figure out what K is. Here we go. I'll go ahead and mark the Y equals 84 right over there. And in green, I have X equals 12 right over there. So what we have here is 84 equals K multiplied by 12. So we've plugged in. Booyah. There we are. But remember, we said that there is multiplication happening between K and X. So that means multiplication is happening between K and 12. Now to solve equations, we have to work backwards because I can't multiply it to get to K. It's already being multiplied. I got to get rid of that 12 so that K can be by itself. So my part of people, the opposite of multiplication is going to be, yeah, division. It's going to be division. So we'll handle that right here, divide by 12 on both sides, and we're all set. We will cancel out on the right side, leaving us with 84 divided by 12. And if you study your multiplication tables, we'll know that that's going to be 7. So right here, we have K equals 7 because 84 divided by 12 is such, making the correct answer here, answer choice B.